Welcome back everyone to my let's play of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening and uh, we last left off we had just uh, completed uh, Catfish's Maw Dungeon 5 we got the hook shot and we also got uh, the reward for the trading for completing the trading sequence game the lens the magnifying lens so that allows us to read uh, that book in the library and also uh, open up a secret on the, uh, the beach so let's go on uh, do some exploration now that we got the hook shot there's a few places that we can uh, explore and a few more caves and uh, one of those places is uh, the signpost maze remember that's where Oliva told us to go uh, he said that there's somebody there who ch uh, who has another song that can teach us but uh, he does require a lot of rupees so uh, we're gonna need at least 300 rupees to uh, buy this song so you always got to read the sign and then follow where the sign tells us to go and then read that sign that it points to. So that sign said go this way and it points to this sign right here. Read it. Now we just head over and we just keep following the signs. And you need the hook shot to complete this because one of the signs is going to be beyond a big pit. So, yep, right over here. That sign over there, there's no way to reach it without the hook shot. So, cross it. Cross the gap, pick up these stones out of the way. Now I just remember we are uh, head over, Let's head north. There's the next sign, read it. And if you uh, miss any of the signs, you basically have to restart the thing all over again. So, go this way. Just keep following the signs, and eventually we'll get through. Go this way. This guy has a really complicated uh, system to get into his uh, house, his dwelling. Oh, go this way. I'm gonna have to lift that rock up here to read this sign. We're almost done. Great, you did it. Your reward is this way. Try again from the start. See, yeah, if you uh, mess up. But we already got the uh, thing, so hey, it's Wart. Wart from, uh, it's Mamo on vocals, but I don't need to tell you that, do I? Everybody knows me. Want to hang out and listen to us jam? For 300 rupees, we'll let you listen to a previously unreleased cut. What do you do? Let's pay. Yeah, I was going to say, that's Wart from uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, the uh, American release. Known as Doku Doku Panic in Japan, so... Yeah, and the original Super Mario 2 was uh, released. Uh, Howard Phillips, the president of Nintendo, thought it was too hard, and uh, he needed something else. And there was a Doku Doku uh, festival, and they made a game over there uh, in Japan. And it had like an Arabian uh, Nights type theme to it. And uh, Nintendo had the rights to it, uh, so they just reskinned it from... Uh, the four characters there are two Mario characters. And then we released it, and Howard Phillips liked it, and that became known as Super Mario Brothers 2 over in America. So, I think it got re released. Gone on tour, Mamu. So, uh, I think it got re released eventually over in Japan as Super Mario Brothers 2 America, or USA. So, just like how we eventually got. The Japanese release of Super Mario Bros. 2 over here is Super Mario Bros. 2 The Lost Levels. Alvira here. Have you been to the Face Shrine? It's north of Animal Village. That is a very interesting room. Click. And uh, I was talking about uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 there, so we didn't get to read what the Mambu's uh, song does. But it said that it livens things up. So, we're going to need to use that song in two different places to uh, proceed with the game. But remember, it livens things up. Mao's not with you. What happened to her? Well, she's over at Animal Village singing with to the animals. Is Taren home? Nope, he's still not around. Guess he's recovering from those bee stings. Hmm. Huh. So. Huh? Yep, Mao's not with you. So. But we're gonna head back down to where we... Kinda got Marin a little earlier in the game, a few episodes ago. I'm gonna head down, there's that one secret cave. 
and there was nothing in there, but now that we have the magnifying glass, well, we can see things that we normally wouldn't be able to see. And what are we going to find in here? We have some Goraya. And what do Goraias have? Goraias usually throw boomerangs. I found a good item washed up on the beach. I'll trade it to you for what you have in your bee button. Okay. And you just usually want to get rid of the shovel, because we don't need the shovel anymore. But we got a boomerang! And if you gave him, like, something else, uh, all you have to do is just return the boomerang and he'll give back your item, so... Yeah, if you give him, like, your sword, or, like, your Pegasus boots, or another item that you basically need to proceed the game, well, you can, uh, trade it back, so... Okay. Yep, see. Well, we need that rock's feather, so... I'm just gonna do a little trade in here. I just want to show you, that, yeah, you can trade anything, uh, but give me back the boomerang. I beg you, I'll return the item you gave to me. Okay. And now we'll finally we'll trade back the, the shovel to get the boomerang. Boomerang's actually uh, kind of a long range weapon. Uh, it actually can deal a lot of damage. Uh, you can use it to cut down bushes. So I know there's that one uh, in a previous uh, two episodes ago, I believe, where I. Uh, use the, uh, did a little jump to, uh, get to a staircase so I can get more, uh, arrows. Well, if you wait till you get the boomerang, you don't have to do any tricky jumps. And I'll just show that off here real quick. So, uh, Pegasus boots and feather. Oop, fell in the hole. Oop, there we go. But, yeah, we'll see the power of the boomerang right here. Yeah, you can just uh, use your boomerang and you don't have to like jump and uh, slash and hopefully land at the same time. You can just uh, use the boomerang to cut down those bushes and clear the path. So, let's head to Martha's Bay. Sometimes the mermaid's still around here and she'll have an another thing to say, but eh, she's not here. She'll pop in occasionally, so we'll eventually find her. We gotta pass by this way a few more times. But now let's head to the Face Shrine. We were told that it's uh, north of the Animal Village, so... Nope. Just head around this way. I'll head back into this little passageway. Well, we don't even have to go that passageway. I just remembered we can have the hook shot to get across here. Remember that passageway took us out to here, so we could technically, I said uh, in the last episode, you could visit the Face Shrine earlier in the game, but there's no real reason to, so we'll just get some stuff out of order. Hoot, there are two shrines, one to the north, the other to the south. First head south, where ancient runes speak of the Windfish. You will learn much there. The boomerang is going to be very handy down here. Uh, there's going to be the almost knights, and you can either defeat them with the boomerang or with your arrows, but... Since arrows are limited supply, you might as well use your boomerang. So. The wind fish slumbers long, the hero's life gone. And here are in the southern part of the face shrine. Some of these almost knights will come alive when we touch them. But. This one right here. You can either use your arrow or your boomerang. Arrows take them out in one hit, but like I said, the arrows are uh, waste ammunition, so just use your boomerang, take them out in two. And we want to head up here because if we, uh, there's a passageway here. And if you, oh, well, piece of power, that's going to be wasted on us because we're going right into the inside here, so. We get another secret seashell, if we already got the level 2 sword from the, uh, seashell mansion, that would just be some rupees. But, we ain't getting the sword until we get all 26 of the, uh, secret seashell, so. We can use the arrow there to take out the almost knights. We're almost near the southern face shrine. Guardian Acorn will be useless because we're going to be heading indoors very soon. So, yep, here we go. The Southern Face Shrine. And this is a tiny little shrine here. Uh-oh, we got another Aros Knight. So, ooh, we can shoot him with arrows just like we did in A Link to the Past. 
And after shooting him a few times, he will uh, break his shield, then he break his helmet. And as long as you're constantly shooting him with arrows, he shouldn't be able to damage you. He like he like the like the almost knights in uh, a link to the past. What he tries to do is he tries to jump on you, but we defeat him and we get the face key. And if we try to read this mule, it's too dark. Yep, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to uh, light, use our magic powder to light the torches. And now we can see the relief. We got a wind fish and we got the owl. To the finder, the island of Koalinth is but an illusion. Human, monster, sea, sky, a scene on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Awake the dreamer and Koalinth will vanish much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, you should know the truth. What? An illusion? This is all a dream? Can't be a dream. Oakley's real. Hmm. Maybe, uh... Well, the nightmares were kind of implying something that we don't know the whole truth of the thing. Are the nightmares maybe telling the truth? Who knows? Hoot, I see you have read the relief. While it does say the island is but a dream of the windfish, no one is really sure. Just as you cannot know if a chest holds treasure until you open it, so you cannot tell if this is a dream until you awaken. The only one who knows for sure is the windfish. Trust your feelings. Someday you will know for sure. That owl seems to know a lot. Who is that owl? Well, I'll eventually find out event much, much later in the game. Now we have the key to the face shrine, Dungeon 6. But before we head to Dungeon 6, let's have some more fun. Usually we have a like a long mini quest between each dungeon and we don't really have much of a mini quest going on right now. So uh let's expand uh the time between uh dungeons. So and we can uh since we're kind of in the area, we can uh take a little time to ride the rapids like uh Sail told us to a uh, long time ago. He said, hey, have you ever ridden the rapids? Well, you can, um, up in the, uh, northeast. So, I'm gonna go through this little rock maze here. Now, eventually we're gonna come to a cave that, uh, will, uh, take us to, uh, where we can ride the rapids. Another way to get to the uh, cave where you ride the rapids is if you, uh, go to that warp point by level four, and then you head east a few things, there's uh, a gap that you can use the hook shot to cross. Well, since we're in this area here, we're just going to take, I guess, the back route. There's a cave, so. You know, my capture card is uh, skadoodly, getting all skadoodly noodly there for a little bit. But, thankfully, it's resolving itself, so. And we're going to head over here to this little piece of land here and there'll be a cave over here we're gonna jump in that cave and we're gonna swim on up this way and I don't know why sometimes I capture card does that I guess it just I don't know but we're not missing anything important so but yeah here's that room where we could have shot across with the hook shot but well, we got a guardian acorn but once again we always seem to get these guardian acorns or pieces of power right when we can't really use them so, because we're about to enter uh, this raft zone here, so. Do you want to challenge the river rapids on a raft? Proceed to the opposite once, please. So let's head on in. Hey, this guy looks like the guy who runs the ferry, uh, the crane game, back in May Village. So we pay 100 rupees, and then he gives us this raft outside here. And there's basically two ways you want to go on the raft thing if you want to fill out your entire uh, map. You can either go down right here, but we're going to... Oh, and then there's another way over to the left that we can go down. So, let's go this way and grab some rupees. We're going to head up to the top this way to get the most rupees. So, we got to have our rocks feather to equip them and jump. And then we're going to head on down to this... To the right here. Like I said, this mainly is just... Get, we're using it just to get a whole bunch of rupees and to fill in our map. So, this, like I said, this is a bonus, so you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a good way to get some rupees. We're going to make back that hundred that we lost, and we'll get to fill up our powders and our thing. We've already made up our rupees, so anything more we get now is just extra. So, yep. Yeah. Here, look 
with all that stuff we got. Woohoo! And then we go down this waterfall and we end up back here. And now we can just head back to that cave again. And we can take another trip on the rapids. So. Nope. Head back on in. Yeah, but my capture card is messing up there. I apologize for that. But uh, if I see it doing that, I'll just pause the, the game so we don't miss anything important. So. Dunk. Well, we got more than 100 rupees on our rafting trip, so we can afford another trip on the raft. This time we're going to skip that first um, uh, waterfall, and we're going to head over to the left a little bit. See where we've we've uh, got rid of some of the uh, map there. So we'll skip it here. Now we're gonna head over all the way to the left, so we can end up on this side and go down and get this treasure chest. You don't want to make sure you head all the way to the left, so we get some rupees. Joy! Woohoo! Now we're going to head over to the right, clear out these two uh, screens, get some more rupees, all right. And now you need look far for a secret. And you think you would need the shovel to dig there, but there's nothing there. Even if you have the shovel, there's no secret seashell there to dig, so. Yep, that's just a little trick. So now we're back on this screen. And this time, we're going to head on the on the north part here. We went south last time, we're going to head north. And that'll allow us to get all the way over to the far left to clear out the rest of the map. Now that secret there, we're going to get that treasure chest uh, from the dungeon. So that staircase that we saw there, that is actually uh, from the dungeon. So oh, oh, we can't get that rupee. Well, we'll head this way and unfortunately we won't be able to get all those rupees because you have to be on the top part there to get the rupees so yeah but here we end up back at the same place and we made a few rupees there but more importantly we cleared out the entire section of the map there so we're going for like I said 100% completion there so we're clearing out uh, all the map so but now we can head down this section here and we can make our way toward dungeon number six the face shrine we're gonna have to get this armor statue. If you look closely, you can see there's a little staircase underneath him. So that's where you know which one you have to uh, make come alive. Use our hook shot to get across that gap. And now we're near the face shrine. We're gonna use that key that we got from the southern face shrine to open up this dungeon. That's a really powerful key. It made a whole building rise up from the thing. And now we can head on into dungeon number six, the face shrine. So, this is also a complicated dungeon, gave me a little bit of trouble as a kid, but that's why I'm here to show you how to do it so you don't get stuck. So, that's what we'll pick up on our next episode. Take care, have a good day. Bye!